I'm addressing all the chapters of Holiness Revival Movement worldwide. We bless God who has given us opportunity to gather together, not as a denomination, but as a, a body of Christ. Holiness Revival Movement is open to everybody that loves the Lord and loves the truth in Christ. We have come to know that not everybody that is connected to this Bible study is an active member of the movement. All lovers of God, lovers of Jesus, in all denominations of the world, connect freely to hear as the teachings from the Master Jesus, who is our eternal life. So we are happy to have you brought us in the umbrella of Holiness Revival Movement and in the umbrella of Christianity. So, whether you are a member of Holiness Movement or not, what matters is the truth that gives eternal life. So, listen to the word very freely, enjoy it, and we shall meet in heaven. Amen. Jesus himself had told me that there are more people that are connected to holiness movement, not members directly, than those who are that to be members. In his wisdom, he makes some members and others to stay aside, all for their eternal life. But this announcement which I want to make now is vital because you who are friends of holiness revival movement, you who love Holiness Revival Movement and believe that God is working in Holiness Movement has raised up this movement in this end time to bring the body of Christ together, to bring revival to the body of Christ in truth, righteousness and holiness. will want also to bless this movement with your material resources. The movement deals majorly in zoom in facebook in the internet and you may not have opportunity to contribute materially which is need for which your spirit often uh, steers you up to do we don't also appear to bother because our goal is not material resources but your soul for heaven however we feel we should also make opportunity available for you that you may happily contribute materially, financially for the advancement of this movement. You might have known that the movement organizes annual international programs and the movement has international campground that hosts these programs. Uh, the coming program before us now is the International Holiness Ministers Conference that is coming at the end of July this year. And uh, the accommodations we have provided are insufficient. And so the movement has embarked on project of accommodation, of providing accommodation for the people. We are currently raising up structures, structures we want to complete to, that will provide maybe more than 60 rooms to get them ready in the next two months in preparation for the International Ministers' Conference. And your participation financially is required in case the Lord has blessed you financially and the Lord has touched you to support this movement so that they can achieve the goal of evangelizing the world, uniting the churches and preparing for Christ's coming. So account numbers shall be run, you can contribute to for the projects going on in the headquarters. It could be you are a member of Holiness Survivor Movement and the amount of money you are to contribute have been rationed unto you. And you can do more than the ration given unto you by the way of blessing which the Lord has blessed you. Go further than that. Do on your own without passing through the chapters in your 
community, in your city, in your nation. We want to make these uh, account numbers available so that you contribute freely following ways of contribution for this work without necessarily passing through the leadership of the movement in your region, in your state, or where, in the nation, wherever you are. Feel free, as the Lord touches you, do. This is free will offering. Do it freely, not compulsorily. No, the Lord loved it, a cheerful giver. We need it in the headquarters for the projects we have before us. And we pray that the Lord will use you to your joy and to your reward in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's rise up upon our feet and go before the Lord in prayer. Tell the Lord to minister to you, to minister to all this period that we before God for soul winning and evangelism. The Lord steer you up to do this for him. The Lord steer you up to win souls for him. The Lord qualify you to do this. May God motivate you to do this. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus name we pray God we have come again to you in this matter of evangelism and soul winning that is what brought Jesus to the world the son of man has come to seek and to save them that are lost and that was the work of his father because he said, I must do the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night coming, when no man shall walk. Father, we want this spirit in us. The spirit of our Lord Jesus in soul winning and evangelism. O oh Lord divine, revive us. Revive your children. Revive the church. Cause us to awake. To this great business of soul winning. Jesus, we need you. Teach us to win souls for the Father. To win souls to please you, Lord. By your Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Personal spiritual revival in evangelism and soul winning personal spiritual revival in evangelism and soul winning why there are reasons why evangelism is getting dead in Christianity and in the churches, even in a movement like this. We acknowledge it that Christianity is at its low ebb at this time. Things are going low. Things are lying fallow. Coldness 
is coming in to the church of Christ. And the church is sleeping in soul winning and evangelism. The new converts that by grace comes, come into the movement or into the church come to eventually adapt the spirit that is already dominating the church. The spirit of no evangelism. We must do something about it to cause evangelism to come back. We must do something to revive you to the spirit of evangelism to cause the church of God to come back to the spirit of evangelism and soul winning. What am I saying? The Lord has said, occupy until I come. Occupy doing what? Act, doing acts of righteousness. Occupy evangelizing. Bringing in people. Yes. Occupy bringing in people to the fold. That is what we should be doing. That is what you should be doing. So, I am telling you, you who know this thing before, as though that, those that saw the temple in its original glory, that we must do something to bring back the glory of the Lord to the temple by evangelism and soul winning. And you who have just come in, who didn't meet the spirit of evangelism in its revival, but you came when the revival is dying. I want you to know that evangelism is one of the reasons why God called you to salvation. Therefore, wake up and do evangelism. I told us the danger of not doing evangelism in our study last week. Now, I'm going to tell you how to revive yourself how to steer yourself, how to bring in yourself into the fire of evangelism. Personal spiritual revival in evangelism and soul winning. I'm going to show you the things you need to possess. What you need to demand of God. What you need to steer up in yourself to get this revival for soul winning. Number one, you need to desire to win souls. Have the desire. The desire to win souls and evangelize. Have the desire. Be of a willing heart. That is what is required in your life. You need to do this. You need to do this. That there must be first a willing heart. First a willing heart to do it. To preach be willing. Desire it. Desire is strength. It is as you desire that you can do it. That you can even pray for it. The Bible tells us in Psalm 38 verse 9. Psalm 38 verse 9. Yes. The scripture tells us here saying Yeah. Lord, all my desire is before thee 
And my groaning is not hid from thee. My desire is to win souls. I am groaning, Lord, to be a soul winner. I desire it. Yes, I desire to win souls. To bring people unto you, Lord. I want to bring people to you. So, you pray. Tell God your desire. But the question is, what if you don't even have a desire? Because there must first be a willing heart. You don't even have the desire. That is the situation of many people. Desire is the energy that will help you do something. That will help you go for something. But what if you don't even have the desire? You must pray for the desire. You must pray to be willing. You must pray to receive the calling. The energy inside you. See the danger of not evangelizing. See your apathy to eat. Your nonchalance to eat. Your, you don't bother. And yet, God will judge you at the end. Because you fail to do this. You fail to bring others to him. He will judge you. But now you don't even have the desire. You don't even have the concern. Why don't you go to God? Make me willing. Give me evangelism concern. Give me soul winning concern. Make me interested. You need to pray. You need to pray. That scripture telling us in the book of Mark, chapter 11. Mark, chapter 11, verse 24. The Bible tells us, saying, Therefore I say unto you, What thing soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them, including the power of evangelism, the willingness of evangelism, the arch of evangelism. You don't have it. The concern of evangelism. You don't have it. The provision for soul winning is not in your program. It's not there. Ask God. Since you want it, but the power, inner power is not there. Ask God to give you the inner power. Ask God to give you the kinetic energy. You need it. Because if you don't do, you are sinning. If you don't do this, you are offending God. If you don't do this, people are dying around you. And whatever has kept you down, Whatever has kept you from doing this? Whatever has kept this thing from your mind? What has, whatever has kept you from being motivated? You cannot tell. You just see that you're not doing it. Ask God. That God. I desire, but I find that I cannot. I find just that I'm not available. God, make me available. God, Cause the fire of evangelism to burn in my heart. God, cause me to evangelize. Make me to win souls. Pray. Ask God. He will do it for you. Whatsoever you desire, when you pray, ask God. Lord, I'm perishing. I find that I'm unable to do evangelism. I am unable 
to win soul go see me now i am five years claiming to be your child i am this number of years in fact even a leader in your house the passion for souls i don't have i'm not interested i am not motivated it's not that i don't have time if there is desire if there is a willing heart there will be performance there will be performance so god grant me desire grant me the willing heart help me to rise yes and when god helps you like this you come to yourself to as a prodigal son that never thought of his father's house since he left never even imagined about his father's house and god helps you as he says i will answer your prayer and gives you the inner calling inside and wakes you up the energy to arise and inter-evangelism will come i will arise and go to my father the energy will come when you receive the calling the pull from inside you i'm saying go to god in prayer i'm saying go and fast and pray what for for the desire of evangelism for the willingness to evangelize for the motivation to evangelize for the passion for soul winning pray let the church organize prayers for people so that they can be willing to preach they can be willing to go they can be willing to do it god should motivate them so they can do this work very important now i've told you you should pray you should ask god for this in psalm 145 verse 19 psalm 145 verse 19 why i am emphasizing on prayer is because the devil is involved in this matter he doesn't want you to do it your energy cannot overcome him except god intervenes he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him he also will hear their cry and will serve them he will fulfill your desire as you cry to god he will hear your cry and he will grant you your desire the power that chains you will be broken the spirit that makes you dry will be removed yes you will just find that you who were bound that could not preach always afraid before people always ashamed for jesus always timid those things will just disappear from your life you will just find a fervency come from god you will just find grace come from god and the lord will even help you he will bring somebody like these okada people that will lower the, the motorcycle for people to climb the lord will just make evangelism lower it <laughs> praise the lord so that you can easily climb and say hey i want a soul and you get motivated oh lord give them the power oh lord give them the motivation oh lord stir up your people jesus pour the holy ghost receive there the holy ghost receive there the holy ghost and you shall receive power after the spirit is the holy ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses the power to make you a witness may god give you in jesus name we pray then the next thing to do is steer yourself steer yourself quicken yourself raise up yourself do something to yourself yes in the book of isaiah steer yourself isaiah steer yourself 
Chapter 64. Quicken yourself. Shake yourself on this matter of evangelism. Shake yourself. Make sure you warm yourself. Yes, yeah, it's as if when you feel cold, you do, you do jogging. Jogging to just generate heat in your life. Generate heat in your life. In Isaiah 64 verse 7. And there is none that call it upon my name. That, that stir it up himself to take hold of thee. There is none that call it, up, call it upon my name. I've told you, call upon God. Call upon God. Then the next thing, stir up yourself. Do something about it. God has heard. I know I told you some time ago, or in many messages, of a man that wanted to organize a crusade. And he needed $10,000 for this crusade. So, he prayed to God. When he prayed, I said, God, I need $10,000 to organize crusade for you. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the $10,000. In Jesus' name, he believes it. Then he went about looking for $10,000. God has had, and I will have it. He didn't sit still. Of course, the Holy Ghost had told him, move. So, he started moving on the way. His eyes saw a house. He just saw a particular house and the spirit moved him. He just went to the house and he saw a lady there. He said, uh, lady, is this house for sale? The lady said, uh, did you see for sale written in the house? He looked embarrassed. Oh, sorry. I just felt that maybe the house was for sale. Then, as he was to go, the lady said, actually, you can come back. The owner had con concluded to put this house for sale. And he had given me the price for it. Now that you have come, you are the first bidder. So, he went into bargaining for the house. And then, settled on the amount of the house. Settled. Then after he said, he went about saying he had a house for sale. I have a house to sell. Which house? This direction. That house there. I want to sell it. So he got somebody and priced the house with that person and arrived at a, an amount that is 10,000 above the one he agreed with that lady. So he collected the house and went and pay, uh, he collected the money rather and paid for the house and handed the house but, uh, handed the house to the new man who has bought the house and his gain was how much? <laughs> his gain was how much? His gain was 10,000 naira as he asked the Lord. You must do something. You have asked the Lord. Don't sit still. Move! I say move! Have you asked the Lord? Why are you waiting? Motivate yourself. Move. Don't sit still. You have asked the Lord. And God, did the Lord deny you? Did the Lord say you won't be a soul winner? Then what are you waiting for? Move. The man also gave us another thing. He asked the Lord for some money. And when he asked and believed that God has answered him, he went about on the road, looking on the road. He was going... A person met him and said, ah, did anything get lost? <laughs> Have you lost anything? He said, actually he was looking for money because he asked the Lord. Ah, so you are thinking that you are going to get the money on the road side. How much were you really looking for? I asked the Lord for this. He said, take. <laughs> Praise, Praise the Lord. Move, the Holy Ghost will give you. I say, angels will direct you. Angels will direct you. 
to come out of the pit you are in, you must raise up your hand for somebody to carry that hand. Is that so? You want to climb up, you must raise up your hand for help. Raise up that hand for help. Angel will pull you out of that pit. Angel will pull you out of that pit. For the, for the generator to start working, you must put the rope on the pulley and start <laughs> you will move I say you will move as you go like this as the people let enter the river Jordan the river Jordan dried up action I say action I say action will you take action will you take action last week when I came here and spoke, I want to know those who took action. Did you take action last, last week? Yes, stand up if you took action. If you took action. If you took action. Tell me that you took action. Stand up that you took action. I will say you had my preaching. I say you had my teaching. Somebody sent me a message from, is it Delta State or so? It's a pastor. I lost. He said, when I had that Bible study, I went out from morning for morning call the very next day. I shouted because I must take action. How can it be that I'm committing sin before God? What happened to my mouth? I must preach. So he went and preached everywhere in a morning call. Then when he finished, he now went to his shop for business. As he entered his shop, whatever happened, he discovered his 20,000 naira that God lost for many months. I told you prosperity will follow preaching. The Lord will remember you, you are preaching. The Lord will open doors. Those doors that have been locked because you have been idle, you have been lazy. When you go for preaching, the Lord will open the door in Jesus' name. Sit down. Steer up yourself. Yes. How, how do you stir up yourself? Listen to messages. There are a lot of messages on evangelism. The message of last Sunday, be listening to it. Be listening to it. And the one for today, be listening to it. The one I'm going to preach this Sunday, another serious message. You'll be listening to it. Go to the ones that are online already. Be listening. That is how you'll be stirring up yourself. That is how. You'll be getting motivated. Be listening to the messages, the tapes that are available in the internet on soul winning, on the state of sinners, on the blessing God has for faithful servants. Be listening to them. Again, listen and um, read books. There are books on evangelism to steer you up. Books on evangelism. Spend time to read those books. Books of soul winning. Read them. The Lord will be sparking in your life. Sparking. Pouring some sparks. 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 Before you know it, fire will cover your life. Amen. Amen. Yes. Listen to testimonies of the soul winning. Testimonies. People are giving testimonies how they did it. Ask somebody else. Have you won soul to Jesus? How did you do it? And let the person be telling you. How he did it. Ask another person. Have you won a soul to Jesus? How many souls have you won so far? How did you succeed? The person will be telling you. This is how I did it. This is how I did it. And by hearing testimony. By watching testimony. You will jump up. Remember the story of one of our brothers. That was paralyzed. And the Lord visited him. And healed his paralyzed leg. He jumped up. And started working normally. And there was a man that was lying in the same hospital with him. That, uh -uh, how did it happen? You're walking? What happened to you? The Lord, the Lord must do it for me too. The Lord must do it. It was a paralyzed man. The Lord must do it to me. The Lord must do it for me. The Lord, jump up and start walking. The power of the Lord will, will quicken you. That which you hear, faith coming by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. It will work in you. Listen to testimonies. 
Steer up yourself. You have prayed. Steer up yourself. As the person jogging. So do jogging. Because you are ready to move. The, the plane has to steam itself. Steam itself. And take a run. Because it wants to fly. It will run and then fly up. As you steer up yourself. Soul winning will be your business. The spirit of soul winning will take you over. Jesus name. Refuse to be afraid within you. You and your brother, see your elder brother, is fear that has been the matter. How to preach to die your brother is a problem. You are afraid. Refuse to be afraid. Refuse. I'm going to talk about wisdom. Come. You don't know how to talk to your, to your brother. Have you known one of these our wonderful books? Go to the post office and post that book to your brother. Uh, it's from... Don't, you, know, you don't need to put your brother's name there. He that winners all his wife. Post it to his office by DHL. It will reach him hand to hand. You hear? It will reach him hand to hand. And when he collects it, who sent this to me? Well, ah, this book, Escaping Hellfire and Making Heaven Made Simple. He won't be thinking about you, that it is you who are in the very house, or you, sister, brother, that is doing this. No. He was thinking of somebody somewhere. And that person is wisdom. And wisdom is God. Amen? And with that book, you will see how he will cherish that book. Hey, you will see. You can even surprise him. Ah, brother, you have this book? Wonderful. I've seen this book before. Have you seen it before? He that winneth souls is wise. So, don't be afraid. Remove fear out of your life. Because fear is the one that is keeping you without progress in soul winning. Fear. You're always tense up. Especially these people in the military, paramilitary. You respect those your sinners as if they are gods. Do you know that they need to go to heaven? They need it. You will need wisdom. But fear. What said the scripture on matters of fear? In the book of Deuteronomy, I read chapter 1 of Deuteronomy verse 21. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 21. The Bible tells us how to get these people remove fear from your heart. Remove fear from your heart. Remove fear from your heart. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 21. Behold, the Lord thy God has set the land before thee. Go up and possess it, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath said unto thee. Fear not, neither be discouraged. You see a man, you see someone, is clearly presented to you in your heart. This man will accept this gospel of Christ. The Holy Spirit is giving you witness. This woman will accept the gospel of Christ. What kept you from ministering to that woman is fear. What kept you from ministering to that man is fear. Take away that fear. That fear is Satan that is blocking your way from being fruitful, from saving a soul from his hand. Remember, I have told you how to pray. Carry that fear to God in prayer. God, I want to preach to this man because I'm seeing you telling me that this woman will accept the preaching, that this man will accept the preaching. But I am just afraid. I don't know, God, 
take away this fear from my life. The Lord will remove fear. Yes. And you will go. And it will work. Because see the promise of God. I gave you that man. I gave you that woman. You came to a family. The Lord just walked on the family. And prepared them for you. I say, I have prepared this family. Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? Should it be the God that prepared the family for you that should be bringing fear? Why are you not aware that that fear came from the devil? Now, the Lord is telling you, don't be afraid. Go. Behold, the Lord thy God has set the land before thee. The Lord thy God has prepared the ground before thee. Go up, open your mouth and release the world and possess that soul for Jesus. Open your mouth. Release the world and possess that soul for Jesus as the Lord God of thy fathers hath said unto thee. What did he say? He said, win souls for me. Evangelize for me. Speak for me. He has told you. Fear not. Neither be dismayed. Fear not. So, remove fear from your life. In Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 31. I read verse 6. The Bible says, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not. Nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. You won't have embarrassment there. Your own thought is embarrassment always. You're always thinking you will be embarrassed. The Lord said you will not be embarrassed. Everybody say, I will not be embarrassed. He will not embarrass me. She will not embarrass me. The Lord said, I am the one sending you. That woman will see me in you and will be afraid to embarrass you. Because I have, I have been working on her. When you come to her, she shall know. Because I have, go, I have gone before you. And I had been working on her. I have been working on her. You are just coming as number two. I have even sent somebody to her before you. I have made him to dream a dream. I appeared in a dream to, her, to him. So don't be afraid. Go. That's what the Lord is saying. How, my brother, can you now remove this fear? Fight it. Fight fear. Bind the spirit of fear. Break the power of fear. Destroy the spirit of fear. Ask God for help. That fear should be removed from your life. Ask God for help. That fear should be removed from your heart. No, refuse it. Refuse fear. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 3 yes the Bible tells us saying because evangelism is a warfare evangelism is a warfare I read from verse 1 when thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou be not afraid of them for the Lord thy God is with thee which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt and it shall be so be not afraid at all of them and it shall be when ye are come near unto the, the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people and shall say unto them hear O Israel Ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint. Fear not. 
and do not tremble, neither be yet terrified because of them. Verse 4, for the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. That is it. The person the Lord is leading you to is a Muslim with a black spot in his forehead and with a beard, is Allah. And he's looking very terrible. Leave that man. That, that man, if you see the troubles that are going on in his life, don't think that because he is like that, he cannot be approached. Many troubles are working inside him. There are more problems with him than the beard that he is carrying on his head. Amen. Go and redeem him. Go and tell him what his creator said. You don't know when he will die. Remove that fear. Move to him. The Bible says, don't be afraid by their looks. Don't get terrified by their looks. You see a man, big man, director, director general. Those are names. They don't go with a person forever. They don't stand in the judgment. The man is the one to stand in the judgment. He's not standing as a director general. He's standing as a creature of God. Therefore, the Lord has directed you to him. Go for him. Don't be afraid that anything will happen to you. Don't be afraid that any evil will happen in your life. The Lord said, no, I am the one going with you. There is a power that is going with you. That power will be broken in your, uh, before you. Yes. Now, <laughs> you see a man sitting down. And uh, in your evangelism as you are going, the man is sitting down. Uh, you were to go there. Satan said, this is one of the wizards. If you go there, <laughs> tell Satan, God says, I have power more than witches and wizards. Because all power is in Jesus. And I'm going with Jesus. Then you're going with what? All power. So, wizard or no wizard, I have commission, I have instruction to preach to everybody. I'm going with him. I'm going with Jesus to the man. You will find a man that had been a Christian before. You will find that the man will tell you, I grew up in these things. It is when this thing happened that happened that I, I backslid. You will bring that man back to Jesus. May God give you that courage. May God give you that boldness. In Jesus' name. Be courageous. Fear not. Be courageous. Look at it again in Deuteronomy chapter 31. Verse 6. Be courageous. Deuteronomy 31. Verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not. Strong, courageous, fearless. Strong, courageous, fearless. Everybody say it. Strong, courageous, fearless. Strong, courageous, fearless. Strong, courageous, fearless. Then it means you have to deal with the devil before you go for soul winning. You have to settle the matter with Satan. Settle with him. As he speaks to you, speak back to him. As he throws that, throw the name of Jesus to him. Throw the word of God to him. You will win over Satan. Yes. Otherwise, he's the one making you weak and fearful. That you cannot do anything. You see a person like that, you even how to speak. Satan has told you something. Cancel that thing he told you in the mind. Preach to yourself. Resist the devil. Tell him that he is wrong. So this is what you need. Be bold to speak for Jesus. Be bold to speak for Jesus. The three Hebrews children were bold. To speak for God. 
and they won the battle between, before Nebuchadnezzar. That strong demon that was causing everybody to bow to Nebuchadnezzar's idol, that the, the boldness of Jesus in the three Hebrew children humbled those demons. Humbled them. Broke them down. Bound them. And all their power fell. All their power fell. Be bold about it. Isaiah 58. I read verse 1. Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgression. And the house of Jacob their sins. Verse 2. Yet they seek me daily. And delight to know my ways. As a dish that did righteousness. And forsook, fors forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take the lie in approaching to God. Go and show them their sins. But some people will tell you. Why are you judging me? The Lord says I should come and judge you. You hear? When they say you are judging me. Hear exactly what I come to do. Be bought about it. John the Baptist did that to Pharaoh. I mean, did that to Herod. The woman you marry is your brother's wife. How will you do that type of thing? Eh? You are speaking. How will I not speak to you? You have done a bad thing. I'm telling you. I will kill you. You will kill me. When it is only when my ministry has finished. You hear me? Cry aloud. Tell the people. Please, you who are afraid that people are saying you are judging them, get this verse very well. Isaiah 58. <laughs> you hear me? If they tell you that why are you judging me, open to Isaiah verse. You have got it. Uh, are you not writing down a verse for evangelism? You got it today. I will read it again. Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Israel, or the house of Jacob their sins. God said you should go and show him his sins. Many will eventually bow their head. Actually, I'm a sinner. And you have the grace to lead them to Christ. Those who are stubborn should not overcome you by saying you are judging people. It's God that sent me to judge. Listen. In Micah chapter 3, verse 8. After the book of Jonah, you'll find Micah. Yes. You have it this way. Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah. Micah chapter 3, verse 8. The Bible says, But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord, and of judgment, and of might, to declare unto Jacob his transgression, and to Israel his sin. Boldly do it. Don't be saying, eh, if I talk now, they will say I'm judging them. Tell them. Everybody has his own message. Although we have formula that says, eh, if you go to a sinner, don't uh, talk to him about what he's dressing, he's dressing. Just talk about Jesus to him. <laughs> that is all things being equal. But we are not the Holy Ghost. Whichever place the Holy Ghost asks you to start, start! Are you hearing? If the Holy Ghost says start from the head, start from there. If he says start from the ear, start from there. If there's something red in the, in the, in the lips, and the Holy Ghost says start from the lips, where will you start from? You start from the lips. Because, have you not heard? Hey, sister, you put lips. That sister is a friend, you hear? Not that he's born again. Sister, 
you put lips in your, lip, in your mouth. You didn't hear, hey, you didn't hear this. That this red thing is the blood of human beings that the, the occultic world produces to put on your lips. You don't know what the Bible says. That when you lift up your hands, you will not hear because your hands are covered with blood. This cortex, this thing you put, they are blood. And your lips also have spoken lies. Your lips covered also, shaded you have, with blood. With blood, you didn't kill anybody, oh, but see your mouth. The matter has started from there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let the Holy Ghost that is going with you Tell you where to start. Jesus started with the issue of, the, of marriage. With the woman of Samaria. He started with that area. And as he started in that area, it moved. It moved and brought to Messiah. Brought out her sin very fast. So, cry aloud. Spread out with boldness. Carry this boldness and go for evangelism. Carry this boldness. <laughs> I remember a young man in Ibadan. We were there. And uh, a, the young man was passing. I preached to him and got him to Christ. He became zealous. He was from Ibonyi. He became very zealous. And I was happy. I had a zealous, a zealous convert. So one morning, I was standing by, the boy was passing by, going very fast to the roadside. I said, I, I call his name. Where are you going? Hmm. I'm going to buy the church card. My mother, I've told her, all the lies she told my father, she must confess them today. <laughs> she must confess. She must confess. <laughs> the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm still telling you the truth. He says she must confess them today. Ah, my mother will be telling my father lies in my presence. I didn't know. Now I'm born again. It can never be. <laughs> Hallelujah. Cry aloud. Spare now. Tell the people their sin. Tell the people their sin. The house of Israel. Their transgression. Father, mother, brother, sister, the Lord give you boldness. The Lord give you courage. The Lord make you of a good courage. Go and bring them to Jesus. It is in this way evangelism has conviction. It is in this way people are convicted and really need know, really know that they need salvation. Was not the woman convict, convicted? When Jesus told her, you have had five husbands. You are now with the sixth. Was she not convicted? Come and tell me a man that told me all things that I did. Go on with it. Yeah. You need courage for that. Be not ashamed. This is another thing the world has done against believers. Shame. This is another thing Satan has done against believers. Shame. Why are you ashamed? It is the person that is naked that should be ashamed. Are you naked? Then why are you ashamed? Ashamed of what? Paul told Timothy in in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. He said, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. My brother, what reason are you ashamed? What reason are you ashamed of God, of Jesus Christ? Who in this world is greater than him? Who in this world is better than him? Is it the president? Is it your master according to the flesh? 
Then why are you ashamed of Jesus? Of the word of Jesus. You are hiding your Bible. You use handkerchief or you are going to church because let nobody identify you with the Bible. Repent of that. Who is, who is greater than God in this life? Who is higher than God? Where did you receive that shame? Fight it. I said fight him. You can't have shame for Jesus. For the word of God, you say you are ashamed? Where is uh, our beloved brother, Senator Emmanuel Bacha? You know, I want to tell you. I told the story before. I will tell it again. When uh, Vice President Sambo lost his mother, people went to Kaduna to visit his family together uh, with uh, Emmanuel Boacha. He was there also among the multitude of great men because he was the vice president. Our beloved brother was there. Then they called on Imam to come and pray. He came and when he finished they called on a pastor to come and pray. The pastor came and said, God, uh, this be with them. Uh, comfort the vice president. Uh, amen. He cannot call the name of Jesus because it was a Muslim society. How do I call the name of Jesus before the vice president? These people. These money mongers. Hell is their place. Hell is their place. They despise God. God shall despise them. So, our brother took note and was burning inside him. How will we embarrass Jesus like this here? Who is greater than Jesus in this place? Hey? He was burning. Then, the Lord gave him opportunity to amend what happened. How did it happen? So, when they were in the process of time, they called on, uh, we called on Senator Emmanuel Butcher for any remark that he may want to make. When the MC said so, he stood up. And whatever few words he said, he said, well, I don't have any much thing to say, but to conclude what the prayer this man prayed in the name of Jesus. If you want to clap, keep on clapping, keep on clapping. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to his name. Oh, not belong to our God forever. Oh, not belong. Be not ashamed of Jesus. Be not ashamed of Jesus, the creator of heaven and the earth. The one that made all the human beings, even the demons, are the one are the work of his hand, and they bow to him. Give him honor, give him glory everywhere you go, everywhere you go. Who is a Muslim? Who is who? That you're hiding Jesus. We are ashamed of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus conquered the world. Hallelujah, Satan, you are defeated. The Lord reigned in my life today. Hallelujah. Call his name everywhere. Glorify him. Satan is defeated everywhere. Among the Muslims, among the heathen, among the politicians. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus conquered the world. Hallelujah. Satan, you are embarrassed. The Lord reigned in my life today forevermore. 
Can sit down. Yes. I heard somebody say, Hallelujah, Satan, you are in trouble. All the occulting people that are there, that were there, all the witches and wizards, a name is coming. All the people that gather in spiritual realm, that name troubled them that day. <laughs> I said that name, the, the imams, the balams, the ims, whoever you call them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. V- verse 8. Be not, ash- be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Or maybe it is a man of God. One of our brothers that came to visit you and you are ashamed to introduce him because somebody there, who is somebody there? What's his name? Where did he come from? That you cannot boldly say, this is my pastor. This is my brother. This is my sister. You are ashamed. Repent. Repent. I say repent. That's it. Don't be ashamed. Go boldly and preach. He is the one to be ashamed. It is a sinner that should be ashamed. Because the Bible says you are ashamed. You are naked. You are wretched. And it's such people that should be ashamed. And not you. So the devil wants to use shame. To block you. And if you talk now, you'll be ashamed. They'll say, hey, there is brother, brother. That's a wonderful name. That name is only among choices people who have it. And they will say, you are sister. You don't like brother. You don't like sister. Sister in Christ. They're not part of it. They're not qualified to be called by that name. So it's a name of dignity. Don't be ashamed of that name. Don't be among your brothers. Among your relations. Be bold. Yeah, it is my pastor. <laughs> I think Boachan knows how to do this for me very well. I'm telling you, wherever we go, is my pastor. The honor he gives makes everybody say, okay, oh, it's okay. Because he's introduced, this is my pastor. Hallelujah. Will you do so? If I come to you now, will you do like that? Praise the Lord. Don't be ashamed. Then be humble. I'm talking about how to be bold in preaching this gospel. Be humble. Humble in your heart. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 57, verse 15. Isaiah, chapter 57, verse 15. 15. The Bible tells us saying, For thus said the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. Can you see? The presence of God is with the humble. The grace of God is with the humble. Don't be proud because you're a member of Holiness Revival Movement. God will deal with you. Why are you proud? Were you a member of Holiness Revival Movement before? Were you born into Holiness Revival Movement? Is Holiness Revival Movement more than Jesus? Is that name more than the name of Jesus? Is it holiness movement that takes to heaven or Jesus that takes to heaven? Righteousness takes to heaven. Holiness takes to heaven. We only teach you righteousness and holiness. But what goes to heaven is your accepting this. Then why are you proud? 
Because we're a member of holiness movement. Do we pay salary here? I said, do we pay salary? Are you going to eat food free here? <laughs> Maybe you eat food after Bible study. Say, hey, let's go. Let's go and drink. Let's go and eat. Then you say, ah, I like holiness movement. Even if we do like that and you like it, Jesus said, I know you. You are seeking after the flesh. No. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness. Yeah. Peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So, humble yourself. Don't be proud for any reason. Don't be proud for knowledge. For knowledge perfect art. But love, love for that person is what will give life to him. It's what will help him. What will edify him. In the book of James. James. The Bible tells us. In James chapter 4. Verse 6. James chapter 4. Verse 6. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith. God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto humble, unto the humble. Listen, if you want to win souls, be a humble man. Let the people see the beauty of humility in your life. The beauty of humility. That a small boy sees you coming with all honor. He will wonder, me, you are giving me this honor. A small boy, you invite him, boy, how are you? Come here, I want to say something to you. He will come. He said, how are you doing? How are you finding life? I'm fine, sir. He's wondering, where is this man? He said, ah, fine. Oh, I like the way you are behaving. Ah, ah, this man is talking to me. Is it me or somebody is behind me? <laughs> It's me, he will yield to you. Because that, he has never seen this type of people. Very humble. Very lovely. Very nice. Yes. People scarcely see comforters. People scarcely see friends. Original friends. People scarcely see gentle lies. Life is rough. Hey, 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 come here, come here. The man came. He said, hey, have you given your life to Jesus? He will look at you and say, what? Is something wrong with you in the upstairs? It's me you're calling like this? Yes, because you lack humility completely. You're using pride. Pride that you belong to a church. Pride that they call you by a name. You miss it. What say the scripture in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12? Colossians chapter 3. I read verse 12. It goes. The Bible says. Colossians chapter 12. I mean chapter 3 rather. Verse 12. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, humbleness of man. Humbleness of man. Humbleness of man. That's what the Lord is saying. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. This is the uniform, the evangelism uniform you are to put on that will make you win. You have been dry all this while because people don't recognize you with the, your uniform. People don't recognize you with your uniform. The uniform of soul winning. 
is holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Yes, this is what you are to put on. Then you will win souls for Jesus. You have something by your life to communicate. That is the word of God. Again, be zealous. Have zeal to do something for God. Be zealously affected. In the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 13, and 14, Titus chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Are you really purified? Do you really belong to Jesus? Why are you not zealous for evangelism? Why are you not zealous for good works? To do good. To bless someone. To serve someone. To speak good language to someone. To give gifts to people that will provoke them to love. To friendship with you. So you lead them to Christ. Why are you not zealous? Why are you alone? Why are you so dry? Why are you not fresh? In Christ. Jesus wants you to be fresh. A peculiar people. Special people. That have zeal. The zeal of your house has consumed me. The zeal of the Lord in you shall perform this. God needs this. So I'm, te I'm telling you, I'm finally be wise. He that winneth souls is wise. Sit down and think. How do you do it? Sit down and think. How do you do it? How do you help your family members to know this truth? Is your brother having a child that can spend holiday with you? That you can invite that child in love. Boy, can you visit me for this holiday? And the boy say, yes, uncle. Or yeah, and the girl will say, yes, auntie. I will come. And he come. You prepare to bless him when he's going back. But he he's coming to join in devotion in your house. He's coming to receive special attention. Then you pass this gospel to this young boy. The, the, the glory of the youth is their strength. Get that young boy properly converted. Your family member shall suffer it. You, um, and tell him, here are these books, here are these, the auntie that is here, uh, brother that is here, uh, uncle that is here, uh, this one that is here, your father, your mother. Remember the young boy who was going to buy the church cards? Yes. Wisdom. You will pass this gospel to your family. Where is Wisdom. Ah, it's then you know how to do birthday. It's not this birthday that I'm doing without meaning. I am going to celebrate my birthday. Oh, ah, birthday? Yes. You are inviting many people for this birthday. This one, birthday, this one. And people know birthdays to come and eat and drink. But your own birthday is for the gospel. They will eat and drink, but you're going to prepare a special preacher. And a special package. Yes. 
to hand over to everybody that comes for that birthday. You will eat and carry. Wisdom. He that winneth souls is wise. Come. All these books and all these materials that you carry, why don't, for, why don't you forget them in a vehicle? Inter-vehicle with them and forget them there. Did you really forget them? <laughs> hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Uh -uh. Somebody will come and have them. Somebody pray on them. If they carry them to go and throw them, say, hey, hey, hey. The material will talk, hey, 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 hey. Somebody will come for them. Why don't you go to bank and leave them in the counter there? You go to the bank, you leave them at the counter. He that winner souls is wise. Can I exhaust wisdom? If we start this wisdom, can I even finish it? My time will be over and wisdom will still be there. Sit down. Devise your wisdom. You will not be idle. You know, the people in the southern part of this country knew how to invest and buy shares. They knew how to buy shares in, in, in businesses. And you see the man sitting down. Money is coming. Because of how much he has invested in shares. You think they're not doing anything. They're doing great things. Money is swelling in the bank. Wisdom. Everybody say. Wisdom. Everybody say. Wisdom. Uh, uh, wisdom. Hey. Samson. Go and ask Samson. Samson will tell you wisdom. He carry fox. Gather foxes. Foxes have hairy tails. So he gathered them together. Whether he poured kerosene on them or whatever. He set them on fire. And they started running. They started running into the farms of the Philistines. Farms. As they enter, fire started burning here. Fire started burning here. Fire started. A whole great land was burned down. Who did this? They say Samson did it. <laughs> Samson did it. Wisdom. May God give you wisdom. Raise up that hand. I will command wisdom upon it. Hallelujah. Receive! Receive! Receive wisdom! Your life shall not be the same again. I'm growing wiser, wiser. I am growing wiser, wiser. I say I'll grow with wiser, wiser. You're getting wiser, wiser. Yes, we're growing wiser. I'm getting wiser. You will get a wiser wisdom. I say wiser, wiser. You're getting wiser, wiser. Yes, you're getting wiser. You're getting richer. You're getting deeper, deeper. You're getting deeper, deeper. Yes, you're getting deeper, deeper. You're getting deeper. You're getting richer. You're getting wiser, wiser. 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 Amen. Wiser, 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 amen, wiser, amen. I say you're getting wiser, 
you're getting richer, you're getting better, 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 better. Wiser, wiser. Yes, you're getting wiser, wiser. Wiser, you're getting wiser. You're growing wiser, wiser. Richer, richer. Deeper, deeper. Hey, you will win so. You will win so. You're getting higher, higher. Yes, you're getting higher, higher. Watch it. See, you're getting higher, higher. Do something for Jesus. Go and bring the souls for Jesus. See you're getting higher, higher. Worship the Lord. The Lord lift you up higher. Go and bring the soul for him. I say you're getting stronger, stronger. Hey. Ooh. Stronger, stronger. Stronger, stronger. Yes, you're getting stronger, stronger. Stronger! Getting stronger, stronger. Yes, you're getting stronger, stronger. Beta, wiser. Richard, am You will bring so the church will grow. Amen. Hey, watch it. You are getting wiser, wiser. He that with us so shall be wise, will be wise. He needs wisdom. Wiser, wiser. Pure and pure. Yes, you're getting pure, pure. Watch it. You're getting holier, holier. Hey. Getting holier, holier, holier in the yes, I'm getting holier, holier. Hey, Jesus, the Lord will use you. You're getting powerful, powerful. You're getting fruitful, fruitful. Hey, glory, you'll be fruitful. You'll be so. I say you're getting fruitful, fruitful. You will win souls. You will be souls. You will bring them to Jesus. Happy, happy. Hey. You are getting happy, happy. Happy, happy. Happy every day. Happy, happy. 
Getting better, better, better. Oh, 